Hi, I'm Lucinda Edinburgh and I'm the art educator for the Mitchell Gallery at St. John's College and I'm also the collections manager for the St. John's College Decorative and Fine Arts Inventory, which is an eclectic collection of over 850 pieces of sculptures, paintings, doodads, um, all kinds of interesting, obscure things. So our series, Unseen Treasures, is a virtual exhibition of these various objects that we see on campus and are not normally seen by the public because they're in offices or in storage or in conservation or various other things. And so to give some highlights and homage to these pieces, we asked our Mitchell Gallery docents if they would pick a piece and choose to do some research for it for the inventory. So I'd like to introduce Jerry Falk, who's one of our docents, and she will talk about the Salvador Dali piece. Hello, so yes, I'm Jerry Falk, and I chose this lithograph print. It is entitled Crucifixion Corpus Hypercubus. It is an artist's edition on Arches paper. You can see here the edition number. It's 18 out of 100, and it has been signed by Dali. I picked this piece because I know a little bit about Dali. I have always loved some of his more popular works, Persistence of Memory, Sleep. Um, I love uh, The Last Supper at the National Gallery. And this image really struck me. I know that he has the, fam the mustache and his muse in his wife Gala, and he had this ostentatious, flamboyant personality but I didn't know much about him. And I thought that might be an interesting topic to explore. Um, but I found a few surprises upon the way, along the way, and I hope that you guys find them as interesting as I did. So first, I would like to show you, this is the original that Salvador Dali painted in 1954 and was acquired by the Metropolitan Museum in 1955. And it is about six feet tall, so it's very large, and I'm sure to see it in person, it's just very striking. But I like to note that there's several differences between the original and the lithograph. Uh, you'll notice immediately that the background in the lithograph is much lighter, so there's not quite as much contrast. It's much darker. So the central figure of Christ on the cross seems to be much more illuminated and in focus. Also, the floor is black and white in the original, and in the lithograph, it's colored with extra emphasis put on the shadow of the cross beneath. The last thing I noticed, there seems to be a lot more definition in the arms, uh, particularly in the left arm. It's much more muscular and has more color and in the original, Christ's body is very pure and perfect. There's no blemishes. You don't see his face, so you can't see an expression, but there's no crown of thorns. There's no nails, nail holes, no wounds. It's just, he's, he's like alabaster purity. So now I like to just look at the print in particular. It looked to me like a typical surrealist Dali print on first notice. You've got Christ's figure is levitating. Well, immediately you notice the cube shapes that make up the cross, which he's not nailed to. It almost looks like, to me, like he's magnetized by these four littler crosses. Um, you, of course, have the figure of Gala, his wife and muse, and she is in traditional um, robes almost and drapery, and she does not look sad or anguished, or she also is very calm. You know, the picture itself is very calm and serene. You've got the calm expanse here that goes out to Port Legat, which is where Dali spent most of his adult life with Gala. Uh, there's a lot of cubes in this, which I expected as the title is Crucifixion, Corpus Hypercubus. So according to the art critic and poet Kelly Grovier in the BBC Culture Newsletter, there is a meditative intensity of crucifixion corpus hypercubus. 
The painting seems to have cracked the link between spirituality of Christ's salvation and the materiality of geometric and physical forces. It appears to bridge the divide that many feel separates science from religion. And for Dali, science opened the door to mysticism. And this was one of the first surprising things I discovered. Dali had a lifelong, voracious interest in math and sciences, starting from when he was very young. He owned books on physics, geometry, optical science, genetics, mathematics, and natural history. And he had notes and comments in the margins for all of that. He just had sort of a renaissance belief that there should be a thirst for knowledge, that everyone should want to know as much as possible. And he liked to take these abstract science principles and figure out how to incorporate them into his art. All the surrealists from the 20s were interested in Freud's discoveries on the subconscious and dream theories. And so that is also evident here. You can see in just the dreamlike quality of it. But the surrealists were also interested in Einstein's burgeoning theories of relativity. A lot of science, scientific discoveries, theories, a lot was happening during this period of the 20th century, and it did not go unnoticed by a large percent of these artists working at the time. Now, in the 40s, when the war broke out, um, Dali and Gala came to the United States and lived in New York and Monterey, California. Uh, during this time, the atomic bomb dropped, mm -hmm. and um, in just talking to the writer Andre Paranode, he said to him, the atomic explosion of 6 August 1945 seismically struck me. Since that time, the atom has become my favorite subject of reflection. Many of the landscapes painted over this period expressed the great fear I felt at the news of that explosion. I was applying my paranoid critical method to the exploration of that world. I want to see and understand the power and hidden laws of things so as to gain control over them. In order to penetrate into the marrow of reality, I have the genial intuition of having an extraordinary weapon available to me. Mysticism, the deep intuition of what is, an immediate communion with the whole, absolute vision through the grace of truth by divine grace. Dali stated that crucifixion corpus hypercubus was based on the treatise on cubic form by Juan de Herrera, Philip II's architect and the builder of the Escorial Palace, which itself was inspired by Ars Magna written by the Catalonian philosopher and alchemist Raymond Lull. So here you have someone who's not only going forward with his thinking and looking at the latest discoveries, but he's gone back to a 16th century architect and mathematician who got his inspiration from a 13th century scientist and mathematician who came up with the first theory of computation, and he came up with an election theory, actually. And he was quite an inspiration for Dali, actually, for his whole life. Dali, he was looking to all resources available to him as far back as the 13th century. Okay, so that brings us to the actual hypercube. Lull was working in two dimensions. Uh, Harara in the 16th century was working in three dimensions, and Dali took it a step further and went to the fourth dimension, which is where we get our hypercube. So this is a hypercube, which is a fourth dimension cube. Uh, the best way we can understand it in our third dimension world is a cube within a cube. A way of understanding this is a line is the first dimension, and a square is the second dimension. A cube would be the third dimension, and a hypercube is the fourth dimension but we can't really understand it in our third dimension world. So what Dali did here was he made it a net, or he unfolded it, which gives you this cross shape of eight cubes. If you have a cube here and you unfold it, you get six squares or a cross. If you take a hypercube and unfold it to three dimensions, you get eight cubes like so. Well, because you can go down one rabbit hole, and then there's something else that you didn't realize, and then there's something else, and there's a lot of information, and most of the information I found was from science publications more than art publications. Like, this is a very well-known picture in the science world.
because of the hypercube. So this hypercube for the cross has been interpreted as a geometric symbol for the transcendental nature of God. So just as the concept of God exists in a fourth dimension that we can't understand, um, so does this hypercube. Uh, Dali has turned it into a three-dimensional form that we as humans can understand, just as Christ came to us in a form that humans could understand. Dali uses his projection of a four-dimensional shape in three dimensions as a literal representation of the transition of Christ from one dimension to the other. This painting seems to be concerned with faith and logic. It asks us to think about the nature and relationship between God, man, and science. The union of Christ and the hypercube reflects Dali's opinion that the seemingly separate and incompatible concepts of science and religion can in fact coexist. Upon completing Crucifixion Corpus Hypercubus, Dali described his work as metaphysical transcendent cubism. As he stated in the Dali dimension, thinkers and literati can't give me anything. Scientists give me everything, even immortality of the soul.